Hello everyone and welcome back to Radiant Moon Tarot. My name is Victoria. Today we are here talking about the solar eclipse in the sign of Aries. This is occurring on the 8th of April of 2024. Hold on to your hats here folks. This is a big one. Number one, the solar eclipse itself is always a very spectacular, if you can see it, um, as a astronomical event, right? It's like we can, it's like the fire in the sky kind of energy. Um, way back in you know before they understood astrology way back in medieval times and things they you know whenever there was an eclipse it was like the end of the world right the end of times of course we uh, don't look at it quite that way these days although eclipses can be very unpredictable and they can bring things out of the woodwork expect the unexpected whenever we do have eclipse energy because pretty much anything goes we can have endings, we can have new beginnings, we can have surprises, we can have joyous occasions and joyous things that come out of nowhere. We can also have things coming out of the woodwork. And uh, so things that have been forgotten about or things that maybe someone neglected, if you think of your workplace, maybe something comes up from two years ago that some old employee never took, uh, never took care of properly and now here it is, somehow you have to deal with it. So things like that can very much come up um, at a eclipses. The uh, eclipses can also bring about faded events and just things that are kind of meant to happen or things that kind of put you right back on your destined path. Now, this particular one, this is going to happen on April 8th of 2024. Um, Pacific Standard Time is 11.20 a.m. is when that full effect of that eclipse is. 2.20 p.m. Eastern Time. Uh, Eastern Time, okay. Um, but check your clocks, check your calendar, check, uh, you know, NASA or something like that to see where, um, where and when yours is going to be visible the most. Make sure that you do view eclipses with a little bit of safety in mind, though, um, because we don't want to burn your retinas out or anything like that. Make sure you do have proper glasses um, to watch it. Now, new moons themselves bring new beginnings. <clears throat> a solar eclipse is like a new moon on steroids. So there could be a new beginning somewhere in your life coming about because of this eclipse. Now, this eclipse tra does trigger um, a whole cycle. Normally, this cycle does end in about six months because it usually culminates with the full moon in Aries, um, usually in October, right, is when we have the next eclipse season. And this one's a little strange um, because we actually don't get another full moon in the sign of Aries until the spring because the, uh, the eclipse in October of 2024 is actually going to be in Pisces. So very interesting kind of energy there. So this is a long drawn out um, new beginning event, which can actually give you some more time to, you know, get things done or get things started or, or start to see some progress. This is also conjunct Chiron. Chiron is known as the wounded healer. So this is a perfect time to heal old wounds, whether they're personal, emotional, um, whether it's something in your career, something in your relationships, right? So this can help us heal some um, insecurities, some fears, right? And uh, so it's a huge opportunity for healing and having a fresh start. So it is really quite exciting. This is also occurring, there's a lot going on, there's also occurring at the time of a Mercury retrograde. Retrogrades are time to take a step back, reflect, regroup, renew, reassess, and reevaluate things in our lives. It can also be a time where we can gain some clarity and insights because we are having a look back at something or we are double checking something over. Um, we can get uh, the answers that we've been looking for and sometimes we can have a second chance at something here, whether it's a second chance to start something new or a second chance to heal something and release it and let it go. This eclipse is happening at 19 degrees. If you know your astrological birth chart and if you have any personal planets between 17 and 21 degrees, you're going to feel this the most, but have no fear. This is going to impact us all. Reflect back to the solar eclipse that we had in 2023. There may be some things that have played out for you, or maybe there's something that you've forgotten about and you're like, you know what, I'm going to try this again. I'm going to give myself a second chance 
to start something fresh or to kind of turn over a new page, turn over a new leaf. Um, that was a doozy of an eclipse last year, of course, because we also had a square to Pluto, right? So that was a, whoo, man, that was a tricky one, that one. Um, and it really did kickstart a lot of massive changes. I know that I had a lot of massive changes last year, especially through the summer when uh, Venus went retrograde in the sign of Leo. That was not a good time. Um, so, you know, this can be where some things have kind of played out for you, or there may be some still some things going on. But this is going to be a very interesting one as well. A couple of days after this eclipse, okay, on April 11th, we have a Mercury Kazemi. So a Kazemi is, the word Kazemi means in the heart of the sun. This is where we can get a mental breakthrough. Um, new visions of the future. This is where we can plant new seeds of intentions. Um, fresh truths may be revealed. And this can actually bring you some good luck. So the Kazemi can actually be a really good time to set intentions to manifest some things into your life. But whatever your situation is, um, this is going to be a fiery eclipse. It's going to be intense, um, but it's very closely linked with the sun. So it can be very creative, uh, very um, energetic. You, can, you know, if you've been feeling stuck in a rut, this might be where you get the energy boost you need to get things started and uh, to uh, really get some action going, right? Follow your passion, your goals, your dreams. Um, you might be filled with a little bit more positivity than you were previously. And it's not that we don't have some bumpy astrology coming in as well because we do but this is probably going to give you a little bit more of a positive vibe to overcome things or to make those little changes that you want to make so having said that let's get into your cards and let's pull out cards for your sign so cancer you are going to be experiencing this solar eclipse in your 10th house now this can be really sparkly for you guys the 10th house can really have some significant impact or changes on your public image, how people see you, um, on your career. You could be um, really gearing up here for like something like a better paying job, right? It's really great for your career status. Um, this can be where your reputation may precede you. You're building a good reputation here in this energy. So it can be very exciting, but you may get some rewards or new beginnings or some improvements because of how people see you, because of um, the hard work and dedication that you've put forward. So this can be a really good time for you where some doors are opening to find a new job, a better paying job. You could even have an opportunity opening up for you to do something like spearhead a project or do some problem solving uh, around your workplace or something. And then, you know, maybe your boss is like, you know what, you're really good at that. And, you know, I think we need to um, really embrace your talents in a in a better or a different way. Um, or if, you know, perhaps this is a great time for you to revamp your resume and put those things on there yourself. But the 10th house does speak to your ambition and your goals. So this can be a perfect time for you to set the ball in motion to make some changes in your life, especially with your career, with your money, um, and to do something. The 10th house does bring us fame and it can possibly bring us fortune. So uh, really embrace that energy in the best of ways. All right. So believe in yourself essentially with this energy. It'll be a little bit of magic in the air for you. So the first card that we've got out here for you, we've got work through your feelings and we've got Aries energy shining through. So this can be incredibly sparkly for you guys. Um, this is about really connecting with yourself. What do I want? Where does my ambition lie? Where do I feel as though I can make the best and most significant improvements in my life right now? Where do I want to have fun? What do I want to create? 
right? So really take that step back, right? Remember, we've got Mercury retrograde. So take that step back, right? Before springing into action. So we really want to connect with ourselves, right? And really be honest with ourselves. What do I want? Where do I want to go? What works for me right now? What doesn't work for me right now? And this is a perfect time to fly high, to break free out of the norm and to follow those passions, whatever they are, even if it's for something fun, right? Even if it's just for something where, you know, you're not looking for fame or fortune or money, you just, there's something that you're really excited about trying or doing. And this can be that little bit of an energy boost for you to uh, get started. We have the seven of cups, get started rather than procrastinating is actually what I was about to say. But anyway, we've got the king of cups there as well. And we have the star. Now, the star is in reverse, okay? So we'll talk about that one there. Um, but the Seven of Cups here is about your imagination, your dreams. Um, this is also saying that you have a lot of options out there. And so sometimes we can really, um, in, with the Seven of Cups, be opening the door to a lot of possibilities. And we do need to be a little bit uh, careful because sometimes in this energy, we can start to feel a little bit overwhelmed or confused. And then we can get ourselves going around in circles and talking ourselves out of something or we can be, uh, you know, really kind of um, keeping ourselves stuck because of fear, fear of failure, fear of success, fear of change. Right. So in that seven of cups energy, we want to make sure that whatever we're dreaming about, whatever we're imagining, wherever we envision ourselves going in the future, we need king of cups energy. We need to be confident in ourselves. The king of cups is all the kings are masters of something. They're all successful and they all take the lead in things here as well. So grab the bull by the horns, just like that Aries energy. It's like, this is what I want to create. I can dream it. I can envision it. I can see it. Well, now is the time to spring into action, to take that leap forward that you need. The King of Cups is about engaging with your heart space, engaging with your feelings. Hey, okay, we've already see that there. All right. But when we do engage with our feelings, when we do connect with our heart, we can open ourselves up to new experiences, new people. We can also um, heal whatever has been holding us back. So you could get some sort of realization as to why maybe you always feel as though you're going around in circles or why does it always take me so long to make a decision? Okay, so there, your heart is trying to tell you something at this time. But I feel with the star in reverse here for you, I feel like there's something trying to come through for you, some blessings, some dreams, some goals, some desires, um, but some change. And there could be here a lack of confidence. There could also be some impatience here, but there could also be an element of uncertainty because the 10th house does have to do with, you know, the things that you want. But we sometimes need to, King of Cups, believe that we can get what it is that we want. And so with the star in reverse there, it feels like, you know, the universe is really saying to you that the stars are trying to align for you, right? The universe is trying to bring you something in, something bright and sparkly. But sometimes if we're in the Seven of Cups energy, we aren't clear about what it is we want. So the universe can't possibly bring you what you desire or help you out as much as it's trying to if you're always going around in circles or if you're not sure or if you're not open to something new. So the star is saying that there's changes trying to come in. There's wonderful energies trying to come in. There's healing trying to come in for you, right? Things are trying to align for you. We need to be open. We need to be patient, but we also really need to be true and honest with ourselves and really attach some positive emotion to what it is we want. Remember, work through our feelings. So if you're feeling overwhelmed and distressed, one of the best things that we can do is um, take a few moments, engage with our energy, meditate, find a quiet space, a quiet room, go connect with nature. Um, whatever works for you where we clear our heads and we allow the energy to flow because the star energy is bringing you beautiful energy 
or is at least trying to bring you some calm and hope and peace and serendipity and blessings and miracles and all kinds of wonderful things, but something is blocking it. And I feel like this is seven of cups. Now, the star energy can trump that, right? Heavier energy, bigger energy than this. But sometimes we can be um, the mastermind of our own good fortune, right? But we can also create our own blocks and obstacles. So you have the power to get that energy flowing in a very positive way. Again, to reassess, reevaluate, get yourself back on track and allow all this wonderful, exciting energy to flow in. This can also represent in order to um, find what it is that you're looking for, you need to embrace change and you need to be willing to let something go and create a little bit of disruption in your life. Because Cancer, maybe you are um, a person that likes peace and calm and serendipity, but this is not how we always get growth. Sometimes we do need to shake things up a little bit. We do need to step out of our comfort zone. And so we need to be willing to change, willing to change things, change situations and release old situations um, so that we can find something a little bit better. There's another message for you. I am open and responsive to the abundance of the universe. You see, the star is trying to bring you something because the star brings abundance and blessings, so all kinds of wonderful things, but we need to be open to it, all right? We also have limitless, know your worth, all right? Unlimited abundance and possibilities coming to you, and we have phases. Shine even when you're not whole, all right? We are all sometimes trying to pick up some pieces. We are all sometimes feeling as though there's something missing. Shine anyway. You do you. Know your worth. Know who you are. Know what you want and be open and go for it. I'll leave all that there for you guys. I hope there was something here for you. If so, please do hit that like button. Truly appreciate that. Um, and if you enjoy my content, hit that subscribe button as well. But let us know in the comments how these eclipses are working out for you. What's going on? What's changing? What new are you trying to bring in? Um, always very interesting. And we're all in this together. So it's always great to share our experiences. But I thank you for watching and I will see you guys later. Bye-bye.